All right, welcome back to you, Balance Eyes of Teletainment. Now, a lot of outcry as regards to youth participating in politics for inside Obudu, Nigeria. People that come outside talk, so the youth have to be involved if they need, uh, if they actually need to demand for good governance. And that's now why we get this Kajat person in the house to talk more how, about how youth feel participate in governance and, in general, how youth welfare can be taken into consideration. She, now the executive director of Youth Alive Foundation, join me, welcome Dr. UD. Ocon inside the house. Good to have you, ma'am. Thank you. Nice to be here. Welcome to the studio. So, um, very quickly, just give us a brief understanding of how the foundation, waiting the, what the objective of the foundation, Youth Alive. Um, youth Alive Foundation is a youth-focused NGO. And we basically seek to redefine the role and contribution of Nigerian youth. We want youth to be seen and viewed and appreciated as leaders, producers, and contributors to our development. And so we actually work on projects that help us to achieve um, those goals. So which kind of projects are they work right on ground right now where they try to achieve some, the objective of the foundation? Okay, um, right now we're running about three different projects. Um, the first one is an anti-corruption project. Um, and this is um, funded by DFID. And this project seeks to increase youth participation in the fight against corruption. How? Because, I'll tell you how. You know, in Nigeria, we keep talking about government being corrupt, people being corrupt, corruption in Nigeria, but we don't really focus on the role of the citizen and what citizens can do. Like, if we are not paying bribes, nobody will be collecting bribes. If we are not feeding the corruption machine in Nigeria, it will not thrive. Now, we look at youth as this demographic that's over 60% of the population, right? And youths are not really being in power in government, and so they are more amenable to change. And with the system now, as it is, if we don't do something about this generation that is growing up, we will not see corruption change or win that fight in the next 20, 30 years. So this is more like a long-term plan. If you want leaders who will give you good governance, if you want citizens who will do the right thing, then when they are younger, when they are in, from like, 15, 18, 20, in their 20s. This is when you need to begin to shape minds around issues of values and integrity. Looking and at so, the present state mm, now, this 21st century, mm. do you really think that that age uh, um, range when you bring come out is the appropriate time to train their mindset and mentality? We should start young. We should start young. And so part of even this our project, working with ICPC, is to ensure that the national values cur cur um, curriculum, which has been agreed upon, is mainstreamed into primary education. And some of the projects we are doing is training education, state education boards, teachers to mainstream, not as a course on its own, but there are some entry courses like civics, social sciences, English, there are about five of them, where we mainstream values of integrity so that children grow up with that. And then we're also in doing interventions in tertiary institutions as well. Because these people have not entered the workplace. And so if we start to talk to them about issues of integrity, that helps. So we're doing that cross board, and even those that are already working. If, if, you, have been, if you are working and you've been pra pra exhibiting or practicing a certain behavior for like three years, and somebody that has been doing it for 30 years, who is more likely to change? It's the person that has done it with less time. So we're also targeting those that are already, they are young, they are in their early 30s, who are working on their late 20s, who are doing things. Because I think they, they can still believe in the Nigerian project. Mm. But sometimes when you get a bit older, you've seen so much, you become jaded and cynical, and you don't even want to change anymore. Now, we get a lot of foundations where they tell us to empowering the youth and being a lot of initiative where if you actually help the welfare of youth and um, even speaking to government to create some policies where they're favorable to the youth, we get a lot of them out there. How impactful has Youth Alive Foundation been? We have been very impactful. I'll talk about the, sec the second project. You know, I told you there were three we're currently working on. And this is funded by, funded by USAID. We are advocating for economic empowerment for youth in the Niger Delta. And so we are asking that out of that oil derivation that Niger Delta gets, let the government allocate 10% and set up a youth development commission. Because for most states, Ministry of Youth is youth and sports. And most of 90% or 80% of the budget goes to sports, right? And so we are saying, this oil derivation money that is supposed to empower our people, let's have a fund, 
dedicated, just a percentage. You know, if you are getting 100 billion, give them 10 billion. In a, in a, in a monitored fund with the board, independent, and let them design strategic programs that will empower youth. But to do that, it has to be by law, so that another government will not come and shut it down. And so we started advocating for a law. We started with Aquaibom as the first state to, to then move on to other Niger Delta states. We were able to get a legislative sponsor. A bill is in the House. It's done first reading. It's done second reading. And one of the core members who had worked with Youth Alive years, um, some years ago took the same structure, this same bill to Kogi State. And they've even gone further than us. They have their public hearing on Friday, which is tomorrow. And so that bill is about to be passed into law. And so many other states, like Delta State and those states, are doing, about to do the same thing. What else does the bill seek? Oh, the bill actually outlines like seven key areas you need to invest the funding. Exactly. And some of them are work placements so that you're, you're partnering with private sector so that youths can get experience for six months. So that means you keep paying the, them to work for six months and place them in like multinational organizations. Now, this is a very good bill where they don't come out and bring out. And um, just like every other bill or law, we, bill we go likely go into law, um, the, one of the major problems is implementation of this bill. Yes. Or implementation, implementation of the law if, it, if the bill turns into mm. a law. And um, further, further on after implementation, now follow up. Yes. And further on after follow up, now to ensure, say, the budget or the money they don't allocate Goes is right effectively form. used. Yes. Now, how all of this, how can all of this Okay, beautiful. Together? I love those questions. These are really good ones. Mm -hmm. Because we thought about them as well. And everything is contained in the law. How it is implemented, how beneficiaries are selected, how much should be, uh, the quota allocated to female youths. Because mm -hmm. you know now in policy, when they say youths come out, it's men they are thinking of, they're not thinking of female youths. How much should be, uh, quota should be allocated to youths with disability, the spread of the youths that benefit from across local governments, the procedure of making public the selection process, the evaluation process, and publishing reports quarterly online, all those are documented. And then there's also an independ independent monitors made up of diff from different sectors, private sector, um, public sector, and these are independent. And this, will, according to the bill, the government pays them directly, and they are to monitor and do impact evaluation of what the bill is going to achieve. And so the bill is a, is really a holistic plan. It's a sustainable holistic plan for development of youth in the Niger Delta. Fantastic. So what are the third projects we want to get on hand? Okay, the third project is really about increasing youth participation in governance. Um, so we came up with this idea that you know, a lot of times when you call youths to seminars to teach them governance, you know, some of them are just really not interested. And you see, we, we did so much advocating for not too young to run. Because everybody in Nigeria was interested. Most youths identified with that campaign. And now the bill has passed. But the question is, are youths ready to run? That's Are a they big ready question. to run? And so um, part of the things we decided to do is we need to teach youth governance skills. They need to know that for you to be a governor, for you to be a president, you first have to start by being an active citizen. How do you care about what's happening around you? What have you done about it? What experience have you gained about local governance? Local government, chairmanship, councillorship. So the, the, the project actually mm -hmm. focus. So the project, on the focus on that, on that. On that project is we decided to use a media and a tool that youths love to use, which is mobile games. They like to play mobile games. And we designed uh, an adventure mobile game, game that teaches all these governance skills I've mentioned okay. in the game. And the game is called Your Excellency. And you can download it from Google Play Store. It's available in Google Play Store. It's available speak. now, but the public launch is tomorrow. Oh. So, yeah. Awesome. But you can still have access to it. Oh, no, yes. You can download it right away from Google Play Store. Wow. So your excellency. It has been so up since International Youth Day. With, with the app now, you fit to, you fit to start, you fit to be governor, yes. you fit to be president. To educate, yes, to educate. Yes, you run. You symbolically run for office. And then you have to do some citizen challenges. Mm -hmm. Some governance scenarios are presented to you, which you have to answer to move on to the next level. And in that process, you learn a lot of things about governance. Fantastic. Yes, in the I'm process. In uh, yes, download it. It's on Play Store. Awesome. So mm -hmm. for the launch for tomorrow, waiting, uh, where did the launch they happen? And yes, it's happening at Lagos Traveling in tomorrow from two o'clock, okay. and uh, we're going to launch the game. We're going to preview it. We're going to let people who have played the game talk about it. And we're going to talk about what the game seeks to achieve, mm -hmm. and hopefully pass the message about what the benefits of the game. Already, so many people are downloading it. We chose to have it ready for the launch so that people can actually talk about the game. Mm -hmm. 
when we do the public launch. Truthfully, me, I will go download them to actually see them. Because I like when you come outside and talk, say, a lot of youths now, they won't participate in governance, in politics, but they don't understand what it means to be an active citizen. Mm -hmm. And I really like that. You need to understand your local government, even your ward, from your ward yeah. to local government, and even state, before you can even aspire yeah. to take over the leadership position. Now, coming, talking about 2019 election, mm -hmm. is there any plan to sensitize the youth from Youth Alive Foundation? Yes, we do, we're also doing leadership training for youths who are interested. We're partnering with some organizations who are already working on teaching youths how to run election campaigns, how to... But the problem with youth is that with our elections, there's so much money in the, in the election process. So many young people really, really, even though we have the bill, cannot afford to run elections the way it is run currently in Nigeria. And so part of what we want to educate youth is to be advocating for the right po election policies so that they can participate, so that they can have a place at the table. So that's so the policies of God does not favor um, It's not really the policies. This is the system that the party system we have, where you pay a huge amount of money for nominations, mm -hmm. and then you spend so much money doing consultations okay. with godfathers. And so we're actually saying, let there be a policy that outlaws that process. Fantastic, but if yes. you say that political ever, because I mean, these same people where you, where you they try prevent, and the people that are going to establish or agree to the law or let it pass the first sec second reading. So if you say that one would go, be go achievable in 2019, even though a fight is difficult, we have to keep fighting. We have to keep fighting, right? Fantastic. We have to. Thank if you. If not so Nelson much. Mandela, an appetite wouldn't have stopped in South Africa. Okay. Thank you so much, Dr. Oko. Mm. Now, just tell us, does Youth Alive, they get presence online? So that's what oh, we there. have, yes. And luckily, we have one handle across Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And it's at YAFNG, Y-A-F-N-G, capital Y-A-F-N-G. On Instagram, yes. on Facebook, on Twitter. Yes, and you can also visit a couple of our website, www.madact. Madact stands for Make a Difference Against Corruption Today, dot NG. I like that. And we have a, an app also. On Mad Act. your excellency. Is it which no, one? No, we have two apps. The Mad Act is an anti corruption portal okay. where you can actually participate and discuss. Nice. It's on Play Store as well. So okay. you have two okay. games yes, we now have on Play Store. The other one is not a game, it's more like a discussion panel okay. platform. It's right. a platform okay. engaging start issues, post blogs, different things around corruption. Awesome, fantastic. Thank you so much for coming to the studio. Thank you for having me. It's been Let, fun. Make, make all of us try to go download the app, Your we Excellency app. Make we know exactly. If you want to run for governor, you want you think so, if you rule the country, let's start from there. Make we see your performance on top. You'll collect bribe, you know, collect bribe. <laughs> Till then. To enjoy more of this, our Ugonke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.